Recording has begun. All right. <clears throat> Hi, everybody. Welcome to the October 20th uh, DEI. <laughs> it's great to have you here. The minutes are in the chat. I think everybody has the minutes. Um, yep. If you could add yourself, that would be really cool. Um, do we, so I'm the, I think I'm the facilitator this week. We didn't have one, but I'm happy to do it. Or we can just facilitate by committee. That's usually not effective, but go for it. We are, so now Sean, you have something to say? <laughs> and <laughs> no. Elizabeth, you're next? <laughs> it's like presentation by uh, when you have no. people present like seven people in a presentation and you're like, yeah. oh, stop, stop, stop yeah. doing that. I think one facilitator is the way to go. So do we want to have a facilitator for next week? Any volunteers? It's just to kind of move us through the agenda. Yeah, I can do next week if no one All else right, wants thank to. You, All right. Doing a photo shoot with oh grandbaby. Grandbaby photo shoot. <laughs> awesome. All right. Yeah, pumpkins and a bucket and everything. <clears throat> A like pumpkins in a out. bucket. <laughs> is the baby in a bucket? Is the grandbaby going in the bucket? She is, in fact, yes. <laughs> it's decorative gourd season. Yes. <laughs> awesome. How is the? How's the? Are you going to go outside? How's the light? The quality? Yeah, it's it's supposed to be like seventy four degrees here today and sunny and wonderful. So, yeah. I think we all have the same weather right now. Yeah, it's got not cloudy, last, but... we've got a cold front slowly oh, okay. in yeah. inching its way down from Canada. So yeah, we've we've been at like 74 for a long time. Yeah, and we have two up until today. I wish to mention I ate the Skyline Chili, Elizabeth, and it was amazing. I miss it. I love Skyline yeah. Chili. Oh, yeah, I would always <laughs> whenever I drove through Ohio, I would stop for Skyline Chili. I love it. Yeah. People either love it or hate it. For context, oh, people, amazing. Elizabeth brought Skyline Chili to Seattle, like in cans yeah. for everybody. And when we made it, it it's spaghetti and chili. <laughs> you have to put the cheese on top to get the full effect. The first comment that came out is it doesn't look like the picture on the can. <laughs> <laughs> so. It looks a lot grosser, I know. <laughs> Well, the picture on the can is usually to help sell it. They're not telling you that that's what you're going to do. It certainly was there to help sell it. <laughs> uh, all right. So I think I'll share my screen. Can somebody, Sean, can you just, or can you? Can oh, yeah, I'll make you the privileges. The, you're a co-hoster now. Thank you. And so we honestly, let's see. All right. So we have a fairly light agenda today. I know it looks like a lot, but it's fairly light. Um, so I think the first thing is that I'd like to say yay to everybody for the chaos metrics translations. As was pointed out to me last time, we have 70 metrics now with 14 new metrics that came out of the last release, which is amazing. Um, and honestly, from a really cool perspective, um, this was our first release that included Chinese translations. So with an effort to kind of improve our inclusivity in this project, I think releasing the metrics in a variety of languages could, could be a nice step in that direction. Um, so does anybody have the Chinese translation document handy? The PDF. I did, but I, I think they're revising it because some working groups ended up missing <clears throat> in that final doc. So I see. Okay. I, I've been kind of lurking in the metrics release channel. Uh, just to see how that. that's going. Okay. Yeah. So I think they're just tweaking a few things, but it's almost there. Okay. Well, I mean, I guess all I would show you is that it's a document with, with uh, written in Chinese, which I do not understand. But um, so I, thank I you. I mean, for that can share that doc how it is, if you like. Yeah, share it. I mean, I just, I'm, okay. it's really cool. One sec, let me grab it. And it was just a, I think it, the really great thing about it is it was a, a huge community effort from our friends in China. And the nice thing is, is it, 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 it it's translating set all 70 of the metrics. So any, any movement forward on uh, Chinese translation releases shouldn't be as much effort uh, moving forward. So, um, and then I also know that the Chinese translation team, we're going to document the process by which it occurred so that as other languages 
could be added, we could follow a similar process because I think it went pretty well, uh, to be honest with you, from a process perspective. And I think the working groups got pretty good at doing it. All right. Um, any comments or questions on on the release or the translations release as well? Skyline I... chili. <laughs> that was not it. I think that was a chat. Is that where we keep our translations? Yes. It's the center of the universe. It's the Cincinnati chili. Okay. I have I just have the file, the PDF file, so I don't know the best way to share it. Okay. That's okay. But Lauren, okay. did you have a comment? Yeah, I just put it in the chat um, and it was more just for my like understanding and education of like processes versus like uh, this is, I guess, not supposed to be an attack at all. Um, no. <laughs> what was the process for like deciding that we were going to translate into Chinese languages before others? Yeah, so really it came down to kind of a, a willingness, I think, of community members to okay. offer because it, it's a, such a human driven process in in this yeah. regard that we needed so the process was essentially right like the english working groups the working groups that work in english would develop a metric but then ultimately we needed we couldn't just rely on on ai to do the translations um and so really that was it and and i think the folks on the asia pacific call had indicated a an interest in doing this work and okay. kind of leading that and we were like great um cool. yeah so right yeah. now, if you take a look in the translations repository, we do have, we're hoping to do Spanish as well. Okay. Um, but again, we, we need a community of people to do it, mm -hmm. which is the challenge. Cool. Yeah. I was just kind of curious if that, like that human organization kind of swarmed around, you know, our Chinese translations organically. Um, yeah. It makes sense to kind of prioritize that one first if it's already there. Yep, exactly. That's what it was. So <clears throat> cool. Thanks. You bet. I know that um, Spanish is also on the list, um, but I don't know that we have the, quite the uh, enthusiasm <laughs> for, mm -hmm. for getting those translated. So I guess that's something we'll need to sort out, but. Mm -hmm. Agreed. Uh, all right, cool. Um, so I did have, I still had this on, on the list from last week. So we still have mentoring um, in the chaos project. I don't. <laughs> I don't quite, can't quite know what people's thoughts are on this. I, I feel like we do the the Google programs, to be honest with you, Season of Docs and Summer of Code, mm -hmm. and they work really, really well. But are there other, other paths for us to really improve the onboarding of new people and, and helping helping mentor? So I don't, we, this was kind of one of the tasks, I think, from last week was to think about this. <laughs> I don't know. Mm -hmm. if, if we did, so any anybody have thoughts on on this and how we might like small steps forward on improving our mentoring? Nothing. Not a total silence. All right. <laughs> It's hard, right? I mean, um, is is mentoring like one on one the way to go? These are kind of some of my thoughts. Should we like have a more like deliberate session? Like we tried the office hours. I don't think they were super well attended. I think it would end up being quite a bit of coordination. I mean, yeah. I still I still host those. Like I still show yeah. up to them. I but I think that's the kind of thing where it just it needs time like okay. it, it made it's it's um i don't know i think i think if the, it's the kind of thing i think if we have it routinely it may ultimately help okay um <clears throat> i think we might need to distinguish also between mentoring and onboarding yeah. so like is mentoring only for students or is it is this like onboarding included in that Sure. Like general onboarding to the project or Lauren, did you have a comment? Yeah. Um, it's probably not like super helpful, but this is kind of just like where my gut feeling is. I feel like it might be more um, it's like if you think of you know the relationship between the community and its members, there's kind of a push and pull, right? And it feels a lot of times like 
um, for me, at least when I was first joining, I had to go find information instead of having that information be presented to me. Um, and so I don't, I don't know if there's, uh, the, the members seem to have to pull for information more than they get pushed information. Um, you don't want to force anybody into a mentorship position, obviously, and you don't want to expect that everybody wants to be onboarded in the same way. Um, but I feel like that balance is more pull than push right now from the community. Um, and so if there's opportunity to kind of get a little bit more in front of people in different ways, um, that might be an avenue we could pursue. Okay. Well, that's a good comment. <clears throat> Did you, when you were pulling the information, Lauren, I mean, did you find it hard to find? Um, Not that we have to sort this out now, like what's hard and what was easy to find, but did you find it hard to find? Um, after I came to a couple meetings, I started to understand the structure a lot more. Um, just like being a part of this group helped me like kind of create this mental model in my head. Okay. Um, but yeah, there's... If I wouldn't have come to the meetings, I think I would have been overwhelmed and just not known where to look. I feel like I need like a site map <laughs> right. just for the organization. And we talked about that a couple of times with, you know, who's in charge of what and who do you go to? Um, yeah. Does that I, help? No, I, I think that's fair. Sometimes I have a, I have a sense and I don't know if anybody else gets the sense, but that we're, that we're kind of Zoom meeting first. Like yes. this, this is kind of the, the place where you get that information. Like, um, like if, if I was to tell somebody joining the chaos community, like what's the best way to start? I always say the chaos community call. That's all like this it human, is, that's it's just the best always high level overview. Yeah. Um, like I never say you should go to our read the docs or our handbook. Never. So is that a problem, do you think? Um, no, I think the meetings are a great way to just introduce you to <clears throat> everything in general. Okay. And it might be a bit overwhelming, of course, in the first meeting, but the yes. more you attend, the more you're able to offer help when you think there's something that you can do. And that's okay. a great way to just get involved and understand better. And okay. I guess for me, you learn more by doing so it's been helpful to just put myself out there. Okay, awesome. Yeah, I would definitely echo that, Kafaya. Um, I, I like having the meetings, the very human touch. I know uh, Matt Snell loves that too, like the, the human side of things. Mm -hmm. um, I wonder sometimes though, if the barrier to entry is I have to attend a synchronous meeting, you know, like that's kind of a lot if you're asking distributed <clears throat> communities to, to work and contribute. Um, as opposed to go scan this website to see if you're interested. Mm -hmm. um, it's just kind of the thought there. Mm -hmm. Would it be helpful? Um, oh, sorry, Perry, go ahead. Yeah, I was, I was going to say uh, maybe another way to put out the information out there for onboarding could probably like uh, maybe make a short onboarding video so people have an idea of the structure of the organization and where they have to or what group they have to join for. Perry, I had kind of a hard time hearing you. I just want to make sure I got your points. Um, so I was, I was just suggesting that maybe an onboarding video could also like help. So more like a short video to like give a generic structure of how the organization is run and what happens with me. And then um, newcomers could just watch the video, probably go to a keyboard and then start them. Um, I like that. Um, we also talked about like a Google form and Slack channel last week. Are we still going on with that? Um, well, I have the Slack channels next because we did, we had to shut a bunch down just because they weren't having activity. Uh, go ahead, Elizabeth. I think uh, I could be wrong, but I think um, we were talking about um, the newcomer channel, like having a newcomer channel. And I know we have office hours, but I wonder if we should rename that <clears throat> like new newcomers or like on, on or, yeah. yeah. 
also I was wondering, would it be uh, helpful to have a regular meeting just for newcomers where um, it would be different than the office hours, I think, because it would be like uh, a, a little more structured. Like we're going to do uh, that onboarding video essentially, but in, in life, like in real life, we'll go through the process. Like it's more structured than just, hey, show up and ask a question if you right. have one. Would that be helpful, do you think, people? I Yeah. Because like I find myself sometimes in working groups and like if we have new members on the in the working group, like when we talk about building new metrics, kind of revisiting that process always like maybe I mean, what if we just ask the working groups like kind of as people join your working groups, make sure to <laughs> to, um, you know, kind of attend to the process of of how we get work done you know don't just run under the assumption that everybody knows how things are done so i mine was instead of maybe a new like uh newcomers or onboarding that we start asking the working groups to be a little bit more attentive as to how work is done within the working groups i like that a lot um one thing that i've seen uh the inclusive naming initiative do in their language work group um if they have like a pull request or something that needs to be reviewed, some like piece of work that needs to get done, like they try to, um, when they assign it, not to assign it to one person. And they'll say, hey, can somebody who's more experienced kind of pair up with somebody who's new? Um, that way it kind of phases in the, I, I know this person and I can talk to them if I have questions on future, future action items. Um, You've been through it once with somebody who knows what they're doing basically and just kind of helps provide that training and mentorship on the job that is super helpful i agree that's a great <laughs> idea because we do in our working groups we as you've seen lauren um we do we have action we we assign action items to people um and typically it's like elizabeth here's your action item sean here's your action item mm -hmm. you know what I mean? see you next week but what if what if we started asking working groups even i mean that might be a great first step forward you're all you all have wonderful ideas that if all action items have two assignees and and the hope would be is that it's it's an individual who's been in the project for a long time perhaps and another individual who has been in the project for a shorter amount of time and they can work asynchronously on that action item. What do people think about that? And it's okay if there's still one person assigned to an action item. It's not like everything has to be, but if you can get to, that would be wonderful. General nodding. I mean, that's like, that's like this, this like micro mentoring. <laughs> through action items you know what i mean it's not like this this whole mentoring across the project but it's it's just and i don't know if it was i think it was kafaya who was saying like it really helps to to do work <laughs> you know what i mean to yes. get that done um I, I really like that idea um elizabeth do you think that's something we could bring up in the community call just 100%. as a recommendation yeah i was just gonna say do you want me to add that so yes yeah. I love when there's like a an idea that comes forward that kind of links a lot of things together. Mm -hmm. That is not a I don't think it's a lot of additional work for the chaos community, you know, it's not a, a new meeting time. It also enables us to continue to work on action items. It brings, I don't know, there's just so many things that- Yeah, it no, it's it, all good. It's really good. Um, Elizabeth, what do you think about, about Perry's comment on a new onboarding video? Yeah, I think that would be great. I mean, we have the like intro to chaos, but it's, um, it's more generic. Like it's not like specific to how you can get involved. It's more of like, mm -hmm. here's what we are. But yeah, and also we don't really, post that anywhere like i don't even think that's on the website it's on our youtube channel but i think it's probably buried by now because it's was it's you know almost a year old now mm -hmm. um so i think yes 100 on the onboarding video and i can take that action item 
although it will take me a little while to do it, <laughs> but I will be happy to take that action item. Would and, anybody else like to help Elizabeth on yeah. that action item? <laughs> I can help you. I mean, I can help you with that. No, <coughs> the the model like Perry. Yeah, sure. That would be, that would wonderful. be awesome. Okay, perfect. And then, um, do we think we still want to do that form? What do, what do we think about that? Because I can put that together like no problem at all. Or some, you know, if somebody else wants to do it. It seems like a pretty straightforward thing. So what was the form again? Do you just remember? to like kind of register your interest in participating, uh, so that someone can reach out to you and say, you know, like on a personal one-on-one -on -one level, someone probably being me to reach out to that person and just say, hey, great, you know, here's here's how you can get involved. Here's Let's... where I would recommend. Blah 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 blah. But it kind of like gives that point of contact because when people come and go from the meetings, mm -hmm. like there's no way for us to kind of keep them engaged and keep you know, keep that tie going. Um, so it's a little more formal. And I let's, yes, I say let's do it. So let's just make a really simple form and we can get that onto the website, like on the participate drop down. I click here if you wanna, I don't know, whatever, we can think of the language. Okay, but yeah. <laughs> and I, I think the form would just be like, you know, who you are, maybe, if there's a particular area of interest that you'd like to get involved in, it could be pretty simple, I'm thinking. All right, wow, look at that. So we have, <laughs> we have, uh, this is amazing. So we have a recommendation to um, produce an onboarding video that Elizabeth Perry and Sean are gonna take a look at. Um, we have an action item for the community call, which is just, to that point, which is um, to recommend that all action items, or to recommend that action items when appropriate, uh, have have two people involved in them. And then uh, let's make a form to include on the website. Right, so for example, that action item can just be one person. <laughs> That's easy enough, to, right? We don't need That's to. A, yeah. <laughs> I think these are really great first steps. All right, cool. And then I, Elizabeth, I can help you with that mostly just because Kevin, like we'll need Kevin to get it up on the website too. So look at yeah, that. that's, that's perfect. such a cool idea. All right. Wonderful. Thank you, everybody. And hi, Bammy. I don't know if you have the minutes, but could somebody drop them in the chat for Bammy? Um, just a note on old Slack channels we did, we have been getting rid of, um, we have been getting rid of them. So we've just kind of been going through and kind of cleaning, uh, cleaning that up just a little bit. Mm -hmm. um, okay, so the next one, this is a, a small, it looks like a small item, but maybe it's kind of a big item mm -hmm. is one of the things that we've been asked to do for the next round is um, to revisit every single metric that we have in the chaos project. And obviously that would just be working group by working group. Um, and the, the idea here is that we have some metrics, say, for example, I don't know, um, inclusive leadership as a metric in the DEI working group. And that metric, I think, was made maybe two years ago. And uh, the metrics are really meant to be kind of living documents that uh, over time, they may their relevance may shift a little bit or their impact may shift a little bit and that it's the working group's responsibility to kind of go back and just read the metrics and and think about them uh, as to how they are relevant in today's today's world so uh, do people have maybe thoughts on how we might go about doing this and this would be kind of something we would repeat across working groups a, a process by which we can you know s systematically look at it or old metrics is it something we should do just like you know every every time we meet we always just pick a metric to look at should we do it asynchronously and then people come back and say this metric looks good from my perspective you know or from two people's perspective what do, what do people think about kind of the workflow on that
your first reactions or something that I didn't say, like some process that I didn't bring up. I feel like in another working group, the idea was brought up to just do like one metric of, mm. of meeting, like take like, you know, 15 minutes out of the meeting and then just pick a metric and at the okay. whole group, just kind of look at it. Okay. I like that idea. Yeah. I mean, it, it seems to make sense to me. Any, because how many do we have in, in DEI? I mean, probably fewer than the number of weeks before the next release would be my guess. And honestly, if we didn't finish them all, I don't think it's a huge deal. I also uh, just want to make a point of note um, in the community call last week, in case you weren't there, um, there is this idea of checking metrics for privacy issues and personally identifiable mm -hmm. information, PII. So that was kind of something else that we're going to be looking at as we like across working groups as we um, review them is kind of taking a look to see if there's something in that metric that could um, potentially be a privacy issue. So I, there's a GitHub uh, issue in the community repo that just is kind of collecting all of the ideas. So I'll drop that in here just for, so people have reference as to where is it is it is the the um, check the metrics for PII. Is it about how the metric might be used in capturing such information? What things you need to think about? Yeah. So like um, it, so like, for instance, um, I think contribution attribution was the one that Lucas uh, was kind of like grabbing onto as an example of if you're going to be identifying specific people in this metric, like we, we as chaos should provide a flag in that metric gotcha. so that anyone using it would be aware of like, Hey, I have to be careful with this data because it has private information in it or potentially, you know, private <clears throat> information. So it's kind of like our responsibility to not necessarily tell them they can't use it, but obviously, but, you know, to, to just flag it for them. And then we also want to provide a, just a one page um, central documentation on like, here's what PII is, here are the levels of how private things are and just some guidance. And I think Lucas and Sophia are working on that with, along with some others. I think Sean, you were in that conversation yeah, as well. Okay, so. yeah. Um, okay. I'll, I'll link to that issue because we did document that, all that in the issue so everybody can kind okay. of see where that's coming from. Great. Thank you. All right. Um, all right. So these are, that would be part of the review. I will say, too, that the other part of the review, it's less relevant to the DEI working group. We're also asking all of the other working groups to think about how their metric uh, could have implications for DEI. Uh, even though they're not necessarily located in the DEI working group. So how a metric might uh, enable you to gain a better understanding uh, with respect to DEI. So that's an addition that's also being made. All right. The next thing that I want to talk about, um, it's always kind of nice to have a meeting after the metrics release because we can kind of get back to a few of the things that are not like, Let's get this into the translations repo. Let's <laughs> let's quick edit and make this edit. So um, there's a, a working group that meets uh, uh, every other Tuesday. So it didn't meet this week, but it'll meet next week. And it meets at 6, 6 p.m. Uh, U.S. Central time. So it's it, it, the intention is to to meet with some of our, our uh, colleagues in Asia Pacific. But one of the things that we're doing is we're starting to build what we're calling metrics models. And the intention here is that every, um, every metric that we have is, is what we call an atomic metric. And in, a metric in isolation may or may not be necessarily useful. Um, just, you know, it's just looking at like the number of issues, for example, is not necessarily a useful. It doesn't give metric. you a full answer. You know, you would it's consume a, multiple metrics at once. Yeah, it doesn't tell you a whole lot. So the, the metrics models are ways of bringing together metrics uh, that can be used in, in meaningful ways. So if you have. Yeah. 
So the metrics models are ways to, to kind of bring together metrics in ways that are contextually specific for a particular scenario. Um, so like of our 70 metrics, if somebody said, hey, what metrics should I deploy to get a better understanding of health and sustainability of my community? We'd never say, oh, just deploy them all. <laughs> like that doesn't make any sense. You know, no, no community or organization would deploy all 70 metrics in an effort to understand <laughs> the activity in their communities. So the metrics are brought together in kind of smaller groupings to provide meaning in certain um, in certain contexts. An example of a metrics model that has come out of this working group, kind of un unbeknownst to this working group at the time, um, was the DEI badging, event badging metrics model, which we're calling um, a metrics model now. And so that the DEI event badging process brings together our DEI event uh, metrics. So say, for example, family friendliness and speaker and attendee demographics um uh diversity access tickets so it brings them together in in ways that community event organizers can can kind of uh, interact with a variety of different metrics i think there's five i don't know how many are going to be in the next release maybe seven something like that six or seven um, but ways that event organizers can interact with the chaos metrics in ways that are meaningful to them for an event so with respect to, so that was a kind of a long buildup, but with respect to DEI, are there other maybe metrics models that we might want to think about that, you know, we could bring together and, and actually work on as well? So we would start working on metrics themselves, but also models, you know, collections of metrics that could be brought together in meaningful ways. So I'm going to stop my share here for a second and go open something else up. So I'm going to come back to my share. So this is, for those of you, this is the spreadsheet that we use to track our metrics, right? So DEI has its own metrics tracking spreadsheet. And the metrics model that I was just talking about is really bringing together this set of metrics in the event diversity. So actually kind of this focus area is somewhat of a metrics model itself. We've been working in the metrics model working group by saying we may have models that are focused on operations, on governance, on software development, on community issues, on infrastructure related issues, and science and academic types issues. So does I'm, I'm just going to kind of open it up if, if anybody's has questions on kind of what I'm asking here or um thoughts like here's the dei event badging one brings together these metrics and, and part of the metrics model could be the development of new metrics anybody have thoughts in this regard <clears throat> okay. i'm good at silence actually i'm not i just <laughs> talked <laughs> I mean, a, a really small one mm -hmm. could be around documentation, I mm -hmm. think, like how, you know, we have a few that touch on documentation specifically. Mm -hmm. um, there are maybe a few others, like, is it, um, I don't think like translations are in any of those. So that could be something new that we work on. Oh yeah, I like that. Like if someone just wanted to just look at their documentation, maybe we can. And that's interesting because that was the, for those of you that don't know, we had a, I, don't know, I think a long time ago, we had a documentation metric. It was like this high level metric and we ended up breaking it out into documentation um, accessibility, right? Um, Discoverability. Do you remember the others? Uh. <clears throat> I feel like in inclusivity, but I don't know. Yeah, uh, no. Accessibility. Usability was one too. Usability, here we are. 
usability, discoverability, and accessibility. And then I like the idea of like documentation translations, right? Okay. Um, good. This is a, this would be new. I do like that. Do we? We also. Do, I don't think we have a metric around like tracking how often documentation is read or. You know, we could do that kind of the, um, did this page answer your question? You know how you'll see that at the bottom of documentation sometimes, like oh, was right. this what you were looking for? Like, so that would be a new metric as well. Um, engagement or like, um, I don't know how you, I forget what you call it. Like accuracy or something. I don't, Helpfulness, yeah, helpability. <laughs> <laughs> That's great. All right, I like that one. Um, any other? I, I do know that that the another project, the All In project, is taking a look at kind of the way that we have event badging to take a look at pro possibly project badging. I don't. We wouldn't have the capacity to do such reviews. It would have to be a a more automated or self-reflective process, but would we want to do something along those lines? You know, it would, instead of DEI event badging, it'd be DEI, oops, DEI project badging. Possibly. I just, we may want to be prepared. I think this is coming at some point. Any other thoughts? For looking at this? Um, one that had kind of come up uh, when we were talking, when we were doing the DEI audit was just in terms of like, um, mm -hmm responsiveness like issue responsiveness and pr responsiveness just in the sense of trying to understand how um, like the, the scenario where sean sean issues a pr and sean is a say a core maintainer of the project and there's a lot of responsiveness to his pr and elizabeth you also submit a pr but you're a new member to the to the community and the lack of, of responsiveness is pretty high, right? That this may be an issue of, of a lack of inclusivity, that there's preferential treatment to given to individuals who have been in the community longer or um, are located in different geographic regions or from a company that, that may be deemed as more important. Would we ever wanna talk about that kind of stuff as a metric model? Yes. Okay. <laughs> yeah, I mean, certainly. Yeah. Okay. <clears throat> um, anything else? It's really from a, I, and this is from an inclusivity perspective. <coughs> okay. Okay, this is great. This is really helpful. Thank you. Um, any other comments on, on metrics models that may, because I do think the working groups are going to start working on these models a little bit more. I don't think the metrics model working group will necessarily build all metrics models. No, I, I, but I do think they're going to provide a useful exemplar that the other yeah, can Yeah, exactly. My, my guess is the working, the metrics model working group will provide like exemplars, they'll kind of manage the process perhaps by which new new working groups or how the process by which working groups can contribute new metrics models, kind of managing the template, you know what I mean? The, the whole release process, that's kind of what I see the metrics model working group ultimately doing. All right, cool. All right, um, so then maybe the the last thing for today is, is do, 
as we move forward, this is kind of thinking about the next six months. Um, are there priorities that we should kind of think about in this working group? Like, should our first priority be on revisiting all of our old metrics and not necessarily the development of new metrics? Should we work in parallel where we do review old metrics, but also occasionally think of new metrics? Do people have, I'm curious as to what, <clears throat> what are our goals essentially for the next six months? Maybe I'll call it that. It's almost like we have to have a sprint to clean up our technical debt. Like if it was software development, you know, you would go back and mm -hmm. look at some of the old code and revisit it. So um, I'm personally a, a fan of, <clears throat> of knocking it out before we add more complexity. Okay. Like, that's just my personal feeling is I would rather clean up what we have already done before we keep piling on to ourselves. But that being said, six months from now, we might even have learned more. So I don't know if, mm -hmm. you know, yeah. Lauren, did you have a comment too? Um, yeah, it was kind of the opposite. <laughs> uh, <laughs> no problem. <laughs> I think it, to me, it made sense to kind of like you're saying, like you're never going to have it like exactly where you want it. And then by the time you get it there, you're going to have to do it all over again. Um, so I kind of thought it makes sense to take one at a time in a meeting and then see if there's a new one that gets brought up at a meeting and kind of work in parallel. But I don't know. I'm not the community manager. <laughs> I honestly, I think both, both strategies are valid. You know, like I don't really have strong feelings about it either way. So totally fine. All right. We do build. Um, so how about, maybe I'll, pr I'll propose this. Why don't we, we do have the, the effort of, ha of being asked to, to take a look at our prior metrics and who knows, we may look at them. We may in 80%, mm -hmm. my guess is that 80% of them, we're going to be like, that's really a nice metric. Still it, the point comes across. We have some small, like editorial things to take care of. Like just a sentence might be bad here or there. I, I, I don't suspect many, if any, are fundamentally broken, would be my guess. I don't know what people's, <laughs> in any in any working group. So um, why don't we start <coughs> next week by taking a look at, and honestly, we could, we can set some of these out, documentation. This is done, right? Isn't it released? All these yellows are now released. Yeah, that actually, yeah, that have we be been updated. updating the spreadsheet? I don't know if we have been in the working groups. Um, a lot of them that I've been in, we have. Okay. Common, Common has been doing it. Value's been doing it. And I okay. Think just after the release. Evolution's done it. Okay. Risk has yep. done it. Oh, yeah. just after the release. No, not yet. Yeah, after the release. <laughs> yeah, that was, so. yeah. Um, so maybe I'll, I'll suggest that we just simply start next week with... Um, Oh, this, yeah, this, okay. This is no longer released. You know what I mean? These two, right? Don't exist anymore. Is that correct? That is correct. Okay. So I almost don't want to delete them anyway. Uh, yeah, maybe, maybe. Yeah. Yeah. We need like a new thing, like archived or something like that that's good because then too if we determine that any of the metrics the older metrics like are just not relevant at all anymore then maybe that that's oh yeah right we just archive them and we still have all the documentation if it comes up later okay i like that yeah as opposed to just deleting them that <laughs> seems so permanent um so maybe i'll propose we just kind of start with row 17 next week we could take a look at diversity access tickets we can just see how that that goes. I'll just say not deleting things is how you become a digital pack rat. <laughs> As a digital uh, pack rat speaking. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So let's see. Let's. How about next week? 
We'll start at the top of the list for review. Okay. And on, yeah, it'd be great. I mean, honestly, if we could just spend five or 10 minutes on that metric and just kind of read through it and see how it goes, that would be wonderful. All right. Um, this is really good. I, I think there were a few things that I, I, I think we want to talk about, and we made a ton of progress through here. So that's great. Um, Elizabeth and Perry and Sean, do you know how you might want to coordinate that work? Um, maybe in Slack to start? Do we need a separate Slack channel? Oh, we can just do like a DM group. Okay. Harry, are you fine. in Slack? Yeah, I'm in Slack. Okay. What was the last thing you said, Perry? I didn't quite hear it. Oh, I said I was going to send a message to Elizabeth on Slack. Okay, just send the message in Slack. Okay, um, great. And then maybe Elizabeth, you and I can just do the same thing with Kevin. Once yep. the form, yep. And you and I can build the form out. Okay, cool. All right, all right, everybody. I really appreciate it. As always, some really good thoughts kind of moving through here that we can kind of work around for the next six months. Absolutely. Take care, everybody. All right. Thank you, everybody. Bye. Have a, have a great everybody. day. Bye. Bye.